This Veterans History Project interview is being conducted on Wednesday, April the 30th in the year 2008 here at the um, Bethany Home in uh, Morton Grove, Illinois, just north of the Niles Public Library. Uh, my name is Neil O'Shea, I'm a member of the reference staff at the Niles Library, and I'm honored to be speaking with, Aug with uh, August B. Hebbinghurst. Uh, Gus. Who's, thank you, Gus. And um, Mr. Havinghurst uh, was born on December the 24th, 1922, in Baltimore, and now lives here in Morton Grove. Um, Gus learned of the project through a newspaper story, I believe, and he has kindly consented to be interviewed for this project. Um, prior to this interview, Gus was... Uh, taking me through his uh, album of um, military memories. And uh, he uh, has a veritable library of experiences um, gathered, assembled, and clearly remembered from his almost four years in the US Army Air Corps. So um, Gus. Um, you entered the service uh, in 1942. 1942. I think it was April. April the 5th, yeah. Oh. So at that time you were living in? Baltimore, Maryland. Mm -hmm. What were you doing before you went in the service? Well, I was, uh, was going to school. I was going to be a, uh, um, uh, I, at least I hoped to be, in the medical field somehow. Johns Hopkins is in Baltimore, of course, but I was working in uh, in a food company, Kraft Foods at that time, and uh, it it led to my uh, my what do you call it? Uh, I can't think of the term. A right. deferment or uh, no, no, no. Would they put you in a number? You're in a certain area. Uh, I was a, um, a medical technician. That's what I was put down because of my my work at with Kraft in the in the food industry. So you had graduated high school by then? Uh, not yet. No, no, no. I finished I, I finished school after I came out of service. No. So, but even though you were still in high school, you had an idea that you wanted to work in medical in the yes, medical field. Yes, that was my goal. My mother was a nurse. Uh, my daughter is now a nurse, and I was a nurse. I graduated as a nurse in 1943 in, in uh, um, Walter Reed Hospital in, 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 Maryland, in uh, Bethesda, Maryland, I think it is, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. And you were employed by Kraft? At that time, yeah. Kraft, the famous Kraft food, Foods, yeah. famous food company. I worked yeah. with them for 25 years, yeah. yeah. But anyhow. So were you, were you drafted? Yes. Well, I went to enlist right after Pearl Harbor. And I wanted to go in the Navy because my cousin was in the Navy. And he was traveling all over the world, and I wanted to see the world. And uh, when I went down, they wouldn't take me because I wore glasses. And they said I had an umbilical hernia. And the Army said, we'll take you, and we'll give you glasses, and we'll take care of your hernia. Well, they gave me glasses, but they never took care of my hernia. But I was very fortunate, being in the Air Corps, I did get to get all over the world, and if I'd have been in the Navy, I'd have been probably stuck up at Great Lakes or something for the whole duration, so yeah. and, uh, no qualms. You were a good swimmer? You weren't worried about the water? Not really. I'm not that crazy about the water. Okay. But I would I would do anything. Yeah. So you were, how did your, um, well, I guess your, your, your mother was kind of sad or understood the well, situation? Well, I was the only child. Only yes, child. I was not supposed to go, uh, because I was supporting my mother and my grandmother. But I said, eventually, I've got to go anyhow. And she said, well, you, you won't be, you won't pass the physical because you have a hearing problem. I was born with uh, something wrong with one of my ears. And, uh, but I had extensive lip reading as a young child in school. I had a very sharp teacher that noticed I, could, I wasn't hearing, and she sent me for lip reading. And when it came time for the hearing tests, uh, if somebody put their hand over their mouth, I said, Put your hand down. I can't read your lips, but I passed my test that way. I falsified it, but I've had hearing aids ever since. 
So if you had if you had declared your your hearing deficiency, I probably would not have been. You probably would not have. Four F. You would have been four F most likely. Uh, I'm guessing. Yeah, and even with your hearing deficiency, you were still a capable, alert. Oh sure. Soldier. Or sure. I didn't get hearing aids right away, of course. I yeah. got them later on, but but the ability, and as I say, the smart teacher that that sent me to lip reading class in those days, you know what, 60, 70 years ago, I picked up that lip reading and it helped me. It's always helped me all my life. I just want to say I can't tell that you have a hearing deficiency at all. Well. And I, we've been talking for almost an hour now. Uh, so this is a wonderful Sometimes teacher. the batteries go down. It doesn't make any difference at all. What a wonderful teacher. So what were your first days like in the military? Was it a shock? Yes. Very naive. Uh, I was born up uh, by... Parents in the Depression years, of course. Uh, we had we were poor, but we were healthy. And uh, I had no brothers or sisters. And I, uh, my father died. Uh, he was eighty. He was seventy-two when I was born, and he died when he was eighty-eight. And I took care of him for four or five years, dressed him, fed him, because he couldn't manipulate. And uh, my mother was a double amputee. She had diabetes. And I didn't think I'd ever go into service, but I did. But uh, I sent my, my, my pay home, of course. It had to be done. But I, I felt uh, I had to give something as we were. Uh, my, my patriotism, I guess, was on top of everything else. It's just that I, I couldn't stand it. I'll never forget Pearl Harbor. I'll just never forget it. Never forget it. The uh, so where was your where was your boot camp or training? Um, Fort Meade, Maryland. Oh, not too far away. No, no, but uh, that was uh, like introductory. I wasn't there very long. They sent me to uh, uh, Tampa, Florida, for for air 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 corps training. Uh, then they sent me up to to uh, Walter Reed Hospital for the medical training. And I had extensive medical training. As I said, I graduated as a male nurse, registered male nurse, in anywhere in the United States at that time. And I went on for further for further training for flight surgeon assistant. I worked in the operating room. So they made the so the the Army Air Corps made the decision. The, you were you were drafted okay. into the Army. And then somehow you wind up in a medical. Well, I had to say, I had to make a decision because of my MOS. That's what I was trying to think. MOS. Um, I had to make a decision. Did I want to go to medical school and, and graduate, whatever it was, and go on further, or do I want to go to to officers' training to be a second lieutenant? If I went to officers' training school and I would failed, I couldn't go to medical school. But if I went to medical school and passed, I could still go on to, to uh, officer's training. So I chose the medical because I wanted to go on further. But I never got there because they sent me overseas. So the Army realized your uh, your abilities and inclinations. Apparently. Apparently. Other, with other veterans, they say they you know they wind up doing exactly the opposite of what they might have been uh, No, no, I'm at. very fortunate. Yeah. Very fortunate. I thought I would get in the, what do they call it, the... Um, Aberdeen, Maryland, uh, the, uh, um, uh, it has to do with gas and... Ordnance and testing or something, or was it munitions, or... Uh, no, uh, no, um, uh, oh, I can't think of the term, I'm sorry, my mind sometimes, um, you know, poison gases and things like that. Yeah, I was afraid, I was afraid I was going to get into that. Yeah. And I, I didn't. Want, I wouldn't, didn't want to kill. I wanted to help, and I did. Did you have to tell the army that you, you didn't want to be in a situation where you would be killing people? No, no, no it didn't make no, any sense. No, no, it never came up. Yeah. No. So, what were the other people like in the uh, in the boot camp? They must have been. Uh, was that your first time away from home from any length oh, yes, of time? Oh it was. You must have been at all kinds of different people. It was. It was rough because. In Baltimore, I were right on the Mason Dixon line, and at that time, the, the the Negro people were in the back of the bus and in another part of town completely. Of course, it's different now, of course, but I was in in a, a barracks taking my, taking my basic training with colored.
people, which is new to me. But it, to me, it was fascinating. I mean, it was interesting because I like I'm a people person. I like people, and uh, I was scared to death I was going to do something wrong. But uh, I got through it. I got through it. <laughs> so then, um, after boot camp, then you got some more medical training. Yes. Yes. Um, I said I went up to Walter Reed, finished that. I was getting ready to go to OCS. They sent me back down to Drewfield, Florida, which is right adjacent to Tampa, Florida, to the Air, Air Force. I took more training in the Air Corps and I got sent right overseas. So uh, it was quick. It was fast. All within a few months. Well, you see, we, we were originally going to Sicily, the invasion of Sicily. And we left from Hampton Roads, Virginia, on a on a on a Liberty ship to go to Italy, to Sicily, and we got sunk with two ships in in the, in the Atlantic. Um, that was awful. Um, the German submarine. Yes, and. Uh, uh, just we were picked up and we were full of oil and it, it was horrible. But anyhow, uh, they picked us up and and took us to Oran, North Africa, the hospital, and we never got to Sicily. Our orders were changed after 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 being in the hospital, uh, recuperating. Uh, they said you, our orders were to go to India, and we went around it as I said to the Red Sea, the Suez Canal, and all Suez that. Canal, the Red Sea. Yes, yes. Uh, a different Air Force this time. See a different different Air Corps, because we get, they kept changing. Our, I was at several Air Corps through a short time. So you're a valuable man. I mean. Well, okay. I don't know about that. No, no. It's just it's just coincidence. 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 So at this time, are you a private or a corporal or? Uh, I might have been a corporal by then. I know you come out as a, as as a sergeant. sergeant. Now, I was going in. As a matter of fact, it, it's it's it's. it's it's immaterial now, but I understand I was up for, in those days, they called it a battlefield commission for a second lieutenant uh, when I was captured. They never went through. My papers never went through and I never materialized, but I had that I had that honor bestowed on me. So I ended up as a sergeant, which is fine, $96 a month. Yeah. So your your final, your the, the mission that you, the, the outfit that you served most of your time with, that was the two twenty fifth medical dispensary aviation. Yes, and that and that grew and then you uh, you were that meant that you were in Calcutta. Was it Calcutta then, or well, we we were formed we were formed in India, in Bombay. Then we went to Calcutta, where it is a unit, and then Bob excuse me, excuse me, Bombay's on the west coast, Calcutta's on the east coast. Was that a train ride from Bombay? Did you go by train or train? Troop, 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 troop train. Uh, uh, then we drove the, the side of the Burma Road from from Lido, which is in Burma, to Kunming, into China, and that was our introduction into China. And we came, we flew back. I would, I would drove it twice, and the last time we stayed in Chengdu. Now. I, I hope I get this kind of audio right. Kunming is the end point of the Burma Road. But I was in Chengdu, which is north a little bit in the center of the city. Was that, also, the of the was that also reached by truck at night? Um, Chengdu? No, I think we flew in. Flew in there. I think we flew in. Incidentally, uh, the big uh, weapons carriers and the ambulances, Neil, uh, they had to be flown in. And they would take them, cut them apart in, in Bombay, in Calcutta, weld them, cut them apart, put them on a plane, fly them into China, weld them back together again. Because they were so heavy they couldn't fly over the, over the Himalayas. And you were saying everything in, everything in that uh, war zone in western, in western or western central China, that was all Everything in there had to be driven in or flown in. Well, mostly, Japanese mostly flown. Flown in because the Japanese. Yes, mostly flown. The Burma Road was, was really nothing. 
really, I mean, for materials. And uh, lost a lot of men, even driving over the, the precepts, per, precepts were so high. The roads were narrow. I've seen them go down 10,000 feet, Jeep and everything, right over the side. Right down. Right down. Horrible, horrible. Well, it's, 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 it's an experience of its own. So what, when did you learn to drive? Was that also... Uh... I never heard of drive in my life. They put me in a Jeep, and I said, I don't know how to drive. You'll learn. I did. So you're driving stick and oh, all yeah. that? Oh, yeah. And yeah, we had... We <laughs> We had you have to have the oil changed and everything, of course, maintenance. And you got to go up a ramp to get your jeep up there. I I went off it because I did that. But that's a long time ago. I drove ambulances and I drove everything after that. <laughs> when so, push comes to shove. Yeah. How do how was the army food? Pretty good. Yeah. But, well, yeah, it was all right. It was all right because I'm a food person. And. Uh, it was all right. We we survived. Did you sleep pretty well? When when we were in China, it was bad. It was reverse lend lease in those days. I don't know whether you heard that term or not. Reverse lend lease. Um, Roosevelt would give so much money to pay for food and to pay for billeting and so forth for us for GIs. And if the Chinese, if 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 the indigenous crop was say cabbage, everybody ate cabbage. If it were peanuts, everybody ate peanuts. It's just what was available locally. And uh, sometimes it's just eggs. You had eggs so they come out of your eyes. But we ate, we lived. So the, um, so most of, most of the time you were stationed in China. Most of the time in China. And you had one particular base or? In the same Chengdu area. Chen oh yes. Oh yes. And yeah. so it changed. So we built our little hospital right there. We, we had a slit trust. That's where I, I uh, was was hurt during a bombing. I was in a slit trench, and uh, I had a bad thing on my head, and my ears were concussioned, and uh, uh, oh, was this a nasty thing? Um, so we had to we had we had to evacuate our people in the hospital when there was an air raid. We had to take them out of stretchers, and we had slit trenches. We put them in slit trenches. We had one raid, and I was I had malaria, very bad, a high fever. And I was out of my mind. And that was also you. you, you it's in China, it's in China, China now. Yeah. But the malaria was very very prevalent. Anyhow, well, they told me this. They put me in a slit trench, and I'm. I'm out of Delirious, my mind. Yeah. I know what's going on. The, the, the raid is over. It's all quiet. I wake up, and I see stars, and I don't know where I am. And I thought, my God, they thought I was dead, and they're burying me. Oh, dear. I had that, that, that horrible feeling. But those things happened. My, 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 my buddy that I told you about, we were walking back from a raid. You know what a P-38 is? Yeah. Mustang? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They were they were over there using strafing, and you got, you got to know the sound of the the, the, the engines. And uh, we're walking back one night as a raid, and a small road, and I said, Dick, drop. And he went to one side, and I went to the other side of the road. And it's came down. It's just... Just straight right between us. We both could have been killed. That was a Japanese Zero or something? No, it was a P-38. An American? Yes. Yes. Why would a mistake like that happen? Oh, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> a lot have happened. That was you and Mr. Uh, Dick Silvera, yes. Silvera. Dick Silvera, yeah. Silvera, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what was the typical, was there such a thing as a typical day when you were in Chengdu? No, uh, it was... It was anticipating the next run, planes coming in, going over, coming back. We were we were active, and we it's awful to say, but there weren't enough serious cases for us. They were all mostly mild. They were dead, or they were not very serious. Except this one chap I said was so bad 
that I that I f tripped over his. That was at night when you were. That was at night. And you felt you felt something and. It and was I was walking in the mud and looking for bodies and tripped over his uh, ankle, foot, his foot, and we finally found his body later. Uh, he wasn't dead, but he was burned very badly, very badly, and. Uh, he was burned so badly we could not take care of him completely because he needed skin drafting and intensive care and uh, he had to be flown back to India for, for further treatment. And you... He had to be flown back to India, India. for further treatment and I was to chaperone him back because I've been taking care of him more or less his guide and uh, we were to be 29 going back and they have a a blister, they call it, a blister, a bubble, it's plexiglass, I guess, and he's sitting there, and I'm sitting there, and we're going back, and all of a sudden, we had to dive, because we were being attacked, apparently, I guess, by um, strafing, and as we dr dove out of the atmosphere, the pressure, the bubble pulled out, sucked out, and pulled him out as well, but I had to work, you know, instantly, and I grabbed him, and pulled him back in again. And I didn't realize at the time when I looked at him, it pulled all the skin off of him that he was growing on. And uh, uh, it's just a horrible, horrible sight. Horrible. But he survived, and uh, he lived, got married, we corresponded, and lived in Coffeyville, Kansas, and we ended up calling him Lucky. So, uh, but it was quite an experience. Quite experience. And if I just say one person, you know, I, I did my job. Yes, sir. I did my job. Yeah. So the so Chen Two was primarily for the air was an Air Force mm -hmm. base, and those B B primarily B twenty nine. They were carrying out bombing raids on Japanese positions. Right, or, right in right in Japan, wherever. They were going to Japan. Yeah. Now, incidentally, uh, Chen Tu is, is not a very large, well, it's bigger now. It wasn't a very large city, but it was one runway nail. One runway. And our beloved government, I hate to say this, made such a boo boo, in my opinion. They had the big, huge gasoline tanks on each end of the runway. Well, <laughs> one time they went up. Oh, dear. No runway. Where were the planes coming? How were they going to get it land? There were some problems, logistic problems. But uh, you know, I, I wasn't running it. wasn't wasn't mine to do. Did you ever have? Did you ever have to assist in an operation? Oh or? yes, oh yes. Um, I'll, t I'll tell you one incident if if you're interested. Sure, it's in India now. We're in India. We're not in China, but it's relevant. I was taught in my schooling. I could suture anything above the cuff or below the collar. I couldn't do hands or uh, neck or face. Anything else I could do, my training. I was in CQ one night, CQ, charge of quarters, and uh, it's in India. And a Gurkha, I didn't know what a Gurkha is. A Gurkha got a big turban and a, a big Great guy. fighters. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, they were fighting somewhere, and one came in, and he had an awful gash here, terrible gash. I could have bled to death very quickly, so I went right to my commanding officer. They were playing cards. It's true story, playing cards. I uh, said, so Major, there's a Gurkha out here, he needs surgery, but it's above the collar. I can't do it. Oh, you can do it, you can do it. I said, I, I can't, you know I can't do it. I'm telling you, I'm commanding you do it. I'm busy. So I did it. And it was all right. I was scared to death, but I did it. But can you imagine? Callous. True story. Callous. I got a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> so you were able to stay in touch with your family? What's that? You were able to stay in touch with your mother back home and grandmother? Oh, no, no, no. No letters where you were. No, I, we had V-mail in those days. Yeah. Um, uh, like birthdays and Mother's Day and things like that. We would, But uh, I would write. We had very poor mail service, very poor. Yeah. yeah. So did you feel... Um, well, isolated. We were really isolated. So, was it? Did you feel like you were under pressure or under stress? Or no, forgotten. Just forgotten. Forgotten, and 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 I mean it in the, in the, 
not in the, uh, well, I'll give you an example. I don't know what it was. I couldn't tell you the day it was, but I remember we got an order. We're, we're, we're medics now. We have the Brassard, you know, the, the Geneva the Red Cross. We're not armed. I never had a pistol in my life. Never. You ever trained in it? Never. 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 They gave each one of us a carbine. You know what a carbine is? It's a rifle, is it? Yeah, it's a rifle. It's, it's semi-automatic. I think of it. They gave us 40 rounds of ammunition. And 40 go brrrr, that fast could go. And an extra pair of shoes and said, we're leaving you. You better start walking back to India. Be careful of the communists going over the Himalayas. God's truth. And that was it. Literally abandoned. And I don't know what year, I mean, I don't know what month it was or anything else. I couldn't tell you. But I never had a gun in my life. Why were they doing that? Because the Japanese were getting close? or? Well, yes. Oh, they're right at our doorstep. They had uh, kamikaze, you know, kamikaze yes. but they had kamikaze paratroopers. They would come down in, in, a, in, a, para, in a parachute. And that's how I got captured. Shortly after that? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And they saw the gun and everything, you know. And, it's a wonder I wasn't killed, but they, they couldn't understand the Red Cross and the gun, and I don't blame them. But uh, so not, not, not a good situation. Now, so you were captured then in um, 1945? What's that? Were you captured in 1945? 45, yes. 45. Yes, just a, a few months before the end of the war, but uh, enough to, to so learn a lot. So that was in Chen too, was it? That was... Uh, well, it wasn't said to, but they moved us. I don't know where they moved us. How many of you were captured at that time, do you recall? Oh, maybe 25 of us, I'm guessing. Was your commanding officer captured also? Oh, yeah. yeah. But only two of us survived. My, my friend and I, we only two left. The others died or committed suicide. Uh, it was awful. It was awful. It was very, 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 very bad. They put you. I didn't think he would live, but I knew I was going to live. I was stubborn. I'm Dutch, and I'm very stubborn. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and very adaptable, and well, very resourceful. And uh, I knew I had to get home. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. So. My excuse me. My grandmother had died while I was I didn't know overseas. My mother was, was very ill, my father was gone, it's all alone, and I knew I had to get home. So they, they, is it okay if we talk about this? Oh, sure. So they put the 25 of you on this, on a truck, and then they ship you someplace? Well, we watched. We, we just, just walked and walked and walked and walked and walked. <laughs> Messing the truck. i got to tell you a funny thing. I told you I learned how to drive. I had to drive. Well, they have, they have all kinds of weapons carriers and dump trucks or whatever. And one day I had to take a, a bunch of GIs, our, our, our old men, I think this was in India, I think, I don't remember, take them somewhere, point A to point B. And I had to drive. And it's about 14 different to shift. Yeah. And they're all in the back of the trunk. And I start off and I press the lever and dumps them all. Dumps them all on the floor, on the ground. <laughs> It was funny then, but it's funny now to me. <laughs> but I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Nobody taught me. So you was, I think you mentioned that the fact that you were a, a medic yeah. and the Japanese knew yeah. that, that that might have helped to save your life? Absolutely. They needed our, our training. Oh, yes. And Otherwise, I'd have been gone. Oh, Would yeah. you have been shot or worked to death or starved? Hmm? Would you have been shot or worked well, yeah, to death? Killed, or killed, killed somehow. And the torture we had was very minimal. We were all tortured. They, they, at night, uh, they put our feet up and bamboo our soles of our feet in us so we wouldn't walk, walk away. See, it was open area, just a little fence around. And uh, you get up in the morning, nails, and sometimes you'd see... Look out in the field, you see a couple of them hanging up. Um, anyhow. And they put you to work on the Yangtze River or something? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So, it, so you were, were you a prisoner of war then for a few months? Or? Just uh, about four and a half months. It would have been longer, but it was repatriated, don't you see? It was um, August, uh, you know, the, the second bomb. I can't think of the date anymore. August 6th, August 9th? Something like that. Yeah. yeah it's 45. Yeah. 45, yeah. But we were, if we had lived, as I said, we would have gone to India, to, to Japan. Right. Because they were ready to take us. But the whole, almost the whole country was Japanese. Poor Chinese people really have, through the centuries, have suffered. Oh, my. Did you ever read The, the Rape of Nanking, that book? Uh, not all of it, no. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, there's something else. Yes. Something else. And in, in Burma, I saw a lot of atrocities in Burma. Committed by... Burma's the changed their name, too. It's no longer Burma. Yeah, Myanmar or something? I don't know what it yeah, is now. Yeah, it's called My Myanmar. I've seen, I've seen women hung up, their breasts cut off, men hung up on their genitals as the, the Japanese went through the villages and things. And that was just to terrorize the population, you think? Or? Sure. Hmm. Yeah. Um, did, uh, I don't mean to make all this morbid. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. The, uh, maybe on a lighter note, you did have some famous entertainers make it to... Yes, yes. Not many, but uh, um, Anne Sheridan, a movie star at that time. She was very, very big. And as a matter of fact, I didn't know she sang. I thought she was just a, a, a dramatic actress, and I'll never forget the song she sang to us, because it stayed in my memory. I'll be seeing you. It was very popular during yeah. World War II, apparently. But of course, we didn't have any radio. We didn't know what was going on. But I'll never forget that. And uh, Jake Falkenberg was a professional um, tennis player. Um, I don't know, remember what she did. Pat O'Brien. Call it Goddard, a few people, but few and far between. Yeah. Uh, PX supplies were minimal, minimal. Cigarettes, beer, toothpaste, things like that, just minimal. Uh, in Chengdu, the city itself, when I'd have a pass, I'd ride a bike, bicycle. I'd go all over town. Enjoyed that. Yeah. Did you... Um did, may, I don't know if you want to mention at the time that you, you, you made some special preparations for Ann Sheridan's visit. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, bef we knew a, a day or so before Ann was coming. And of course, everybody's all excited about that. And they built a little latrine for her, just for her. Had her name on the top of it. All. I can see it now. Well, she came, she did her thing, and she never used it. She never used the latrine. So when she left, they put another sign up and said, Ann Sheridan didn't sit here. <laughs> and that's in our memory. So that's a, a humorous uh, <laughs> re recollection. Pardon if it accurate, but that's exactly what it said. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Gus, you said you, you don't, um, as far as the medals go, you would have been entitled to a, pris a Purple Heart novel. I don't know right? why. You know, well, I'll tell you, Neil, back up a little bit. Sure, please. I've had so much trouble with the, with, the, with the military. That's one of the reasons I'm here. Long story short, apparently there was a fire in... St. Louis? Uh, St. Louis? Somewhere. Yeah. And many records were burned. And my records were some of them were burned. They had, they had no record of my malaria. They had no record of, of, of my surgery. I've had an awful time with the VA. And it's not their fault, but to try to prove something. Yes. Uh, what was I getting at? The medals, the Purple Heart? Oh, yeah. And I, and, and I was supposed to get the ribbons for whatever it was. And I, I, I don't know where I got that. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. And then eventually get the, the medals that go with them. They were to come. I never got them, and I don't know what they were anyhow. But so what? So what? It, it doesn't bother me. I'm just lucky I got out. 
but uh, so when you were when you were a prisoner for four and a half months, um, did you know that the tide of the war had turned against the Japanese, and maybe there was a chance you would get out? Well, no. We heard rumors, of course. Uh, there was no more Chicago. There was no more New York. Everything was bombed out. Uh, the president was killed. Of course, Roosevelt had died. That's right. That's pretty you know, yeah. and, 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 and he legitimately had died. But they, they laid everything on their own head, don't you see? Yes. Just to lay it on. And we, we, we couldn't believe anything. Nothing. As a matter of fact, you remember the, the term Tokyo Rose? Yes, yes. When we landed in Bombay, whatever whatever it was, before we ever got into any of this, as we got off the ship, we're walking down, there's a speaker, Corporal so-and-so, this is Tokyo Rose, don't you wish you were home tonight, head with a milkshake with your girlfriend? Sergeant so-and-so, this is Tokyo Rose, don't you think you your girl's out somebody tonight? Can you believe? No, I can't. They knew us by name. Eerie. Eerie. And then there was one over in Europe, too. I forget her name. Uh, Sally Axis. Oh, right. Christ. Sally right. Axis. Yeah. That's another story, don't you see? But this Tokyo Rose, she was American. She's from um, San Francisco, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> There's so much going on. So how about that day that, so do you remember the day that you were released to the to the Chinese? Or well, I, I, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. I, we had heard there was some bombing, some big bombing. Well, you, you know, so what? You hear everything. And, it, you know, really, it's the expression, living day to day, you've heard that. It was, <coughs> excuse me, almost hour to hour. And we didn't know what to, so that's why I'm so tense most of the time. I'm, I'm ready uh, to defend myself. Mm -hmm. This is, it, it's been born in me. I, I have am, amnesia, I don't sleep well, and it's awful. But anyhow, we didn't believe it. And finally, uh, a, a Japanese who spoke broken English, as we called him, said, we friends. We friends. That's all I said. And I thought, I wonder if the war is over. It just hit me. It just hit me. I'm sorry. But that was it. An awful experience. And was that American troops then? Or was it American troops who, who or British troops or well, Americans came in later, yes. Yeah. I don't they must have they, I don't know where, where they came from. They must they had to be flown in. They had to be. Because it was only a couple of days. Yeah. But uh we still don't believe it. Yeah. I, I, I remember seeing the first CI and God, we were so thin. I weighed hundred and nineteen pounds when I came home. Yeah. Uh, almost six foot. Yeah. And you still have a memento from that awful experience when you were a prisoner of war, right? You brought home the, yes. yeah. the, the stones. That's what I've got left. And we have a picture of that, which we'll put at the end of the uh, of the, well, in, the trend, in the appendix to the. It's transfer. not much, but it's something. Oh yes. So. Um, I, I just want to say one more thing. Oh, certainly. We 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 were supposed to fly home, finally, but we didn't. The troops shipped from Calcutta to Fort Lewis, Washington. I don't know, like, uh, like another 21 days. I had so like shorts on. We didn't have any clothes. And we landed in Fort Lewis. And I'm telling you, we were the first meal, we just ate and ate and ate until we got sick. And you know who served us our meal? German prisoners of war. Wow. Yep. And this is in December. And we had to get clothes to go home. Mm -hmm. but I made it. <laughs>
And you had a very good, um, I probably should mention, you had a, uh, um, a very good friend, a Chinese, uh, Mr. Young? Oh, Jimmy Young, yes. Yes, he was, he was a, uh, a captain in the Chinese army, and he spoke excellent English. He had to speak English, and we were friends. And he would take me, when I'd have a pass, he would take me to a Chinese wedding or a Chinese funeral. He taught me uh, Chinese etiquette for eating and just very good friends. But uh, he didn't make it. And um, I think you mentioned that one time you were standing next to the famous American um, war course. Oh, Ernie Pyle? Yeah, where was that? No, we were sitting, we were in uh, sometimes really. It was during the raid. I didn't know who he was. It was during a raid. In Chengdu? No, this was in... Um, I thought it was Burma, you know. In Burma? Uh, I kind of think it was Burma. Uh, another raid, but and again, you know, you're, you're, you know, sometimes you're packed in there. And I didn't know who he was. They get to talking, and I, and, uh, and I recognized who he was. I introduced myself. And I said, I you know appreciate what you're doing, and I, I, I really uh, I, I admire what you're doing very much. And he thanked me, and uh, off he went, off he went, busy, busy, busy. But uh, that was a, that was nice. And you made it. You you were able to see uh, Shanghai. Shanghai. Yeah. But just very briefly, very briefly. But I went back, as I said, since then, and I really saw it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I went to Hong Kong, Beijing. It wasn't Beijing, and then it was. It was. Uh, what was it years ago? Peking, 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 uh, Beijing, Peking, um, Bob, uh, Shanghai, Hong Kong. A bit older, older. Love it, love it. Why? I love the people. Why? I, I really do. I, I I think I'm part Chinese. I thought you were Dutch. <laughs> no, I have. I, they were. They are, were, and are. Well, it's, it's a different China today. Of course, it's too Westernized, in my opinion. I was lucky. I saw it before it went. But and I assume a lot of them are. But they were very helpful, truthful. Um, uh, they believe in family. Uh, they're just wonderful people. They helped me a lot. They, they, I'll just tell you one thing. When we first got there, they, some of our GIs had red hair, and they had never seen red hair before. And they wondered how they got their hair red. Now, we're, we're in a farmland. Chengdu is in a farmland. And the horizon, that's the end of the world. There's nothing beyond that horizon in their mind. On top of that, the fellow would take out his false teeth. They almost fainted. They had never seen that before. Yeah. True? Yeah. Now that's, of course, that's not today. No, no. So the, um, so you, 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 where were you um, demobilized at or released from the service? Was in, in the uh, Where did I get out of? I think it was Fort Meade again. I'm pretty sure. Back in, in Maryland. In Maryland. Yeah. I was in the hospital for uh, a number of months after I got home. I got back in 45. I wasn't released until 46 sometime. I, you know, I don't remember the date. Yeah, late February, I think, in 46, you said. Could yeah. be, but yeah. I know it was cold, cold weather. Yeah. Um, so did you have any trouble readjusting to civilian life? I would imagine no. you did. No. no? Hmm? Just young and resilient. See, my job was my my job in those days. If you return to your uh, your job was guaranteed when you return. And you got it. And I had worked for Kraft, as I said first, and I got my job back until I went to school, and then I, I, I on and on and on. I I got my my doctorate's degree, my PhD in 1953. Was that on the GI Bill? Mm hmm. What was your field of study? Medicine? Nutrition. N nutrition. I, my, I have my own business. I've had my own business for 60 years. This is... this. 
This is one of my calling cards. I, I, I don't have a business anymore. Beckard Laboratories, right here in Morton Grove. My middle name is Becker, as you know, and I had a partner by the name of Art, Arthur. So we put the two together and made it Beckart. And I've, uh, I've had clients from India, China, Berlin, Australia, Greece, France, all over the world, really. So I've been very fortunate. You, re you received your PhD from which school? From uh... um, Well, it was back east. Uh, back on Long Island years, I mean, it's, it's, it's university now, I guess, I really don't know. And you, and you, so you used the GI Bill then? Oh, yes. I, I couldn't have done it without it. Yeah. And I took night courses. I took, a, remember in those days they had, well, I don't know if you remember or not, but they had correspondence courses. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You'd send for things. Yeah. Oh, I was determined, my, 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 my education was disrupted because of the war, and I was going to somehow get it back in a GI Bill, beautiful. So I wrote the house. I used the GI loan to get a house, and I got married. Did you, you, you had, you met your wife after the war? Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. She didn't see you in a uniform or, no, or no, anything? No, no, no. No, we got, I got married in 49. No. And, um, you did stay in contact with your wartime buddies after the service. Oh, yes, for a number of years. Uh, Dick especially. Uh, and uh, I, I lost contact with him. As I said, I was best man at his wedding. He, had his, he came to my house in Baltimore for his honeymoon, and I took him around. He, his, his wife was in the waves in the military. She was in the waves. And uh, I went to his home, met his parents. He's in New Bedford. And... We corresponded for a number of years, and I would visit him when I could in that area. We'd get together, and I, I guess maybe, Neil, I'm guessing, this is 08, maybe 15 years ago, he must have died. And a friend of mine in Morton Grove was from New Bedford, and he was going on vacation one year, and I asked him to look my friend up. You know, which was a coincidence. And I gave him the address and everything, his mother, you know, so forth, everything. Oh, no. And he came back, he said, there's no, there's, there's no family there. There's nobody there with that name. I couldn't find anybody. You had mentioned he was of a particular nationality? He's Portuguese. Portuguese in New yes. Bedford, oh, Massachusetts. Yeah. His, yeah. Uh, his father was a... Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But we were very, very close, very close. So, not to go over a uh, difficult subject, you and Dick were the only two that that survived yeah. the, the imprisonment. Yeah. Yeah. He also was a medic, was he? Yeah, he well, yes, but he... Or they thought he was. He's, 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 what did I say, T-O-B, B-O-B? I forgot already what I said. You know, you're... What's your classified as? M-O-S? M-O-S, sorry. He was a cook. Ah, no, he wasn't trained as a medic, per se. He helped me save my life, and I helped save him, and that's, we were just that close. Yeah. Why did you need the operation on your hand? How did, what was oh, that? Oh, I, uh, I don't know you see from here, all the way around, all the way around to here. I wanted to raise, my thumb was back, way back here. When I got in the Citroen, somehow it got back there. I don't know how, but... And they, I've got a stainless steel knuckle in here. Yeah. Stainless steel. And they said, you'll never touch your little finger. Don't tell me never to do something. I'll do it. You're determined. And yeah. I did it. Yeah. So you, and that's always been red, all those years. Yeah. So you were, you were sunk in the, you were sunk in the Atlantic Ocean? Yeah, that's, that's awful. You came down with malaria? Yeah, and the malaria still bothers me to this day. You... You contracted malaria. I never got a pension for any of these things. Yeah. You contracted malaria in China? No, in, in, Burma, in India. In India. And then you go to China, um, and then you're at the end of the, as the war, toward the end of the war, then you're captured as a... Hmm. See, I was in, mostly in, 
a little bit in India, enough to get sick, so to speak. A little bit in Burma, driving the road, but most of the time in China. Most of the time in China. So is CBI. So we have a, there's a couple of questions that we always ask the veterans at, sure. at the end of the interview. Sure. Um, um, how do you think your military service and experiences affected your life? Well, good question. I've never been a quitter in my life, ever. I've always been my own boss. I've need, needed no motiv motivation all my life. So that's the way I'm born. But I, I knew what I was doing in the service, although I didn't know what I was doing in the service. And I did it to the best of my ability, and I think it made me a, 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 a better person, somehow. And I don't mean to wave the flag. This, I'm not saying that. But uh, I, 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 uh, I deplore some of the activities that are going on today with our country. And again, it's none of my business, and I'm not a politician, but uh, I don't like to see what's going on. And I'm glad I'm phasing out. At my age, I, I won't see a lot of this. Um, I'll be 96 in December if I live that long. I mean, 86 in December. 96, please. I feel like 106. <laughs> um, yeah, then the next question follows on that one. Um, did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? No. Well, yeah, I, I take that back. It did because um, I, I, I learned a lot about the so-called expression political. I saw where people were bumped off of planes for high-ranking officers, and their dogs were the poor guy that should have been on the plane, never got on the plane to go home. Things like that I've seen. And uh, I, I didn't, I, 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 I know that goes on, of course. But, uh, well, like, like I told you, my, my, my commanding officer, for an example, I wasn't right. And I, I could refuse, I could probably be court-martial because he ordered me to do it. It was an order. Yeah. And believe me, I was scared to death. Yeah. Then I would bumble at number one. You know, you're a young kid, you're doing the best you can. But uh, it, 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 the, the military has made me cognizant, yes, of politicalizing, mm -hmm. if there is such a word. Yeah. Um, is there anything at this point that you would like to add to the interview that perhaps we haven't covered? Well, I, I'm very appreciative of your time and your effort to do something like this, wow. I never expected it, number one. Never. And, uh, and I hope it, 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 I don't want anybody to be ever interested in reading it or looking at it or anything else. Uh, if they are, uh, I hope they can get something from it. I don't know what. But uh, it's so personal with me. So personal. And uh, between you and I in a telephone poll, um, who cares? I care. That's all I can say. Well, and yeah, I've been I, very I, active in the, in the military. I've 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 put in many many hours of volunteering up at Great Lakes, and uh, as I said, I'm a people person. There's another whole subject, and I don't know whether this is the time or the place for it, but. Uh, I, I have at the moment no use for the military. They almost killed me. Almost died. After the war or during the war? About five months ago. Oh. That's why I'm here. I almost died. I know they didn't mean to do it, but uh, it's another story, Neil. Another yeah. story. But anyway, if you don't mind my saying it, you look you look you look and sound wonderful. Well, thank you. It's yeah. Thank you. It's, it's a very it's a very uh, vigorous interview that you've given, and um, uh, 
I know I talk people are going to read it, and uh, and it, I think it's one of the. This is as far as trying to afford people, you know, a generation or two later, what it was like. I mean, I I, I think your powers of recall and uh, description. Um, well, they haven't taken my memory away from me. No, are 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 remarkable, and and anyone who who reads your transcript is going to know a little bit more about the uh, about the greatest generation in World War II. So thank you for well, calling me and uh, to me it's the Great War, of course, of naturally, of course, of yeah. course. And I appreciate World War One. I. I appreciate Korea. I appreciate Vietnam. And I cannot see what we're doing now. Yeah. I just can't see that, and yeah. that's a political thing, of course. Yeah. And I don't want to bother. I don't want to bore you with that. It's not my right. It's not my, not my right to do that. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Gus. Thank you.